Gandhi was always considered wise, but it was only later in life that he discovered the power of his influential mind tricks. No, not like that. Or that. Let's just cut to the intro. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Gandhi, lawyer, campaigner, political activist. We're going to find out how Gandhi used intelligent mind tricks to outsmart the Brits and get some of the things he wanted. During Gandhi's life, the British Empire had control over India, and Indians started seeking independence from British rule. Whoa, 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 hold up, man. Let's rewind a second. What do you mean, mind tricks? Good question, and today we're gonna find out. But since magicians never reveal their tricks, we're gonna need to explore Gandhi's strategies ourselves. Gandhi was part of the Indian National Congress, an Indian political party, and the British viewed the Indian National Congress as a troublesome organization, when all they really wanted was equality, independence, and freedom in their own country. But these British rulers, led by Lord Irwin, continued imposing unfair rules, sanctions, and penalties on the native population of India. Gandhi had some work to do to convince Lord Irwin that his people deserved equality and freedom. So, what do you think Gandhi did about it? Did Gandhi, I don't know, talk to Lord Irwin? <sighs> exactly. He negotiated with him. He might not have liked Irwin and some of the things he'd done, and he was probably mega angry, but those things didn't matter. In order to strike a deal, he needed to show respect. Gandhi understood the importance of freedom for his people, but he also understood the importance of conversation, empathy, and listening. And the importance of not calling everyone a dickhead. Why would Gandhi respect someone who isn't doing the right thing? I'd rather insult them. Well, Gandhi was pretty angry. But insulting someone, even if you are angry, probably isn't a good foundation for a productive conversation. Instead, Gandhi's strategy was to try and understand the other side, before asking for what he wanted. He knew that Lord Irwin felt that the colonialists' actions were justified, so Gandhi went to Lord Irwin and negotiated. They had four separate meetings which ran at around 24 hours in total, and this is how it all went. It's March, 1931. Gandhi and Lord Irwin are about to have their first meeting. Hello, Lord Irwin, Viceroy of India. Hey, Gandhi, seeker of peace. Uh, before you tell me what you want, homie, I'm gonna remind you what my people have done to your people. But I already know about that. That's why I'm here, home slice. Yeah, I know you know, bro. But we need to provide some context. That's how storylines work. We've been here for a while. And we've done some good stuff for your economy, your health, your transport system. But I guess you're not here to talk about the good stuff, because there's not been much of it, <laughs> if you say so. Anyway, here are some of the not-so-good things that the British colonialists have done to the Indian people. Number one, we've introduced and enforced a massive salt tax, but only on Indian people. Yeah, we didn't like that, bro. That's why we did that big, peaceful march for over 200 miles which you imprisoned my people for? <laughs> I'm guessing you want those guys released, right, Doc? Yeah, bro, I do. <clears throat> Number two, we've prosecuted lots of nonviolent protesters. And we also want them released, buddy. <sighs> You're asking a lot here, homie. <laughs> Number three, we've outlawed peaceful protesting. Yeah, despite your violence and aggression. And Number four, confiscated lots of the properties belonging to you, your people, and your peaceful movement. Number five, lots of other stuff, both historical and current but uh, let's not get into that. I think you've painted a pretty bad picture of the British people already. I have? Like I said, I don't think we're that bad. But I guess that's why we're having this conversation, right? I have a question for you, my man. You must hate me. In lots of ways, yes. And you must hate the British people, dude. Well... And you must want to punch my head into pulp and kill me and my family and tell everyone how horrible you think we all are. If I wasn't a kind religious man, then yeah, maybe. So why are you talking to me peacefully, homeboy? Why aren't you threatening me? Or posting turds to me? Or telling me how my mom should have never given birth to me? How would that help? Psh, I don't know. That's what everyone else does. Maybe that's why I'm successful, bro. Because I don't do those things. Maybe I understand that conflict leads to more conflict, which leads to more polarized politics, which leads to even more conflict. If I don't talk, listen, and try to understand the people I don't like, they'll always keep doing things I don't like. 
And so, in time, through his peaceful actions and patient conversation, Gandhi got a lot of the things he was asking for. But why did Gandhi talk to Irwin if he didn't like him? Maybe hurling insults isn't the best thing to do, but it definitely would have been justified. Look, I'll show you guys an example of something that happened last night. Tap into my antenna. It's a convenient flashback device. Green is the best color in the world. I just painted my whole bedroom green and it looks amazing. Hashtag bedroom goals. Green. Blue is the best color you total moron. Hashtag go green back is to obviously school. better you goddamn snowflake. Hashtag I'm gonna hunt you down and kill you. I'm gonna kill your dog and kill you. I don't get Gandhi. Colonialism and classism are terrible things. Maybe violence was necessary after everything the British colonialists had done to him and his people. Yes, they are terrible things. And sometimes in history there have been times when violence has been a necessary last resort. But Gandhi wasn't yet willing to go to a last resort. He knew that unless we talk to people in a rational and sensible way, and at least try to understand each other, we're never going to agree on anything. And that's why Gandhi talked. So he knew that aggressive action from his side would lead to more aggressive action from Lord Irwin's side. Exactly. Gandhi made sure to think ahead and predict how the Brits would respond. So he looked for ways to avoid that outcome. And because Gandhi was a lawyer, an important part of his job was to read the minds of his opponents. And studying this type of psychology helped him to convert his enemies into allies. Gandhi realized that people mirror what we do. If we argue, they argue. If we try to talk, they try to talk. If we're peaceful, they'll usually be peaceful. And that is a mind trick. <laughs> I guess no one's perfect, eh? <sighs> Good night, Confucius. Thank you.